those of you here uh, from China will, uh, will know He Xiaoping uh, very well. He is absolutely one of China's most dynamic, successful, and uh, I think courageous uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, huge success with his venture sold to Alibaba. He had a fantastic, uh, crucial position uh, at China's uh, most uh, uh, you know, uh, influential technology group and still decided that there were more things that he could do uh, on his own, struck out a second time on his own as an entrepreneur, and so far is having great success uh, with uh, his uh, electric vehicle car company, which is named uh, Xpeng after his own first name, Xiaopeng. Uh, so Xiaopeng, tell us a little bit about why you decided to try this new venture. Why I start up a business again? So, uh, rationally speaking, you know that the technology is so advanced that we may to live 100 years old or even 120 years old. If I retire at 30 or 40 or 50, it's too early. And uh, I, and, uh, I, I have the, my first child at that time. And uh, if my child asks me, what job uh, do you do, Dad? And, and I can only tell him that I uh, uh, am an unsuccessful investor. That's why I decided to start business again. So service, products, something else. So. will be a great thing, particularly for those who has already start off a business. So that's why I decided to start again. The car uh, as um, uh, you know, literally the vehicle for your next venture. Why did you decide that that was the particular industry you wanted to get into? I start my first business with a mobile web browser with investment from Nokia. And uh, China, uh, and globally speaking, I sensed uh, the changes, technological changes. And uh, I understand that uh, software is uh, so important. Uh, so uh, the automobile industry is more than 100 years old. Actually, there are quite a few giants in this automobile industry. But in the last decade or so, there are uh, a few uh, automobile giants in the Uh, mobility will become more efficient and uh, become safer. So if my company can make uh, some humble contribution, then we will feel very proud. That's why we uh, choose to enter the automobile industry, and we believe it is the right moment. You know that many uh, people are so fearful that they are deterred from entering this industry. Uh, that uh, industry. Uh, it's a very crowded space, obviously. There are uh, lots of uh, automobile makers, and especially, uh, as we discussed yesterday, lots of electric vehicle uh, manufacturers. We heard from one of them, uh, uh, WM Motors, uh, Freeman Shun. Help us to understand where uh, Xpeng fits in this, uh, in this industry. Are you at the, the high end with Tesla? Are you at the kind of lower end with uh, the hundreds of companies that are competing? What's unique about Xiaopeng? It is important to find the right point to start uh, our, uh, our business. Tesla was launched about 15 or 16 years ago, and it has been very successful. For Chinese uh, companies, actually, uh, they are at the mid-range or below uh, mid-range. So uh, we believe that in mid-range, you can achieve a, a larger scale. But the bigger you grow, the less uh, gross margins that you can have. So with less gross margins, you do not have money to do research and development. So for the 
automobile uh, industry, we want to have marginal returns from our R&D. So from my company, uh, we focus on mid-range and above, and we will add the factor of smart, smart factor into our products. So we will be a little bit lower than companies like Tesla, but higher uh, than other companies uh, in the uh, middle range. So, so usually we will. This means that we will compete with joint venture uh, automobile manufacturers in China and some other uh, companies. So if we can uh, survive in these uh, market segments in the next three to five years, we believe that we will become successful. So we are already five years old. Uh, if we can continue to work for the next uh, two or three years, if we have uh, a complete uh, chain uh, and we have more products, models, then we will become more successful. Uh, your first vehicle, I don't know, uh, do we have a picture of this that we can show? Um, uh, X, there we go. Uh, Xpeng, uh, for those of you who don't know, is actually a local Guangzhou uh, company. Uh, I was over to your uh, headquarters the other day and had a chance to uh, sort of sit in one of these and, and get the feel of it. It's uh, the G3, right? And it's uh, a sport utility vehicle. It's surprisingly roomy uh, inside for as compact uh, as it is. You've uh, sold about, uh, what, 12, 13,000 of these, is that right? Yes, you are right. We uh, we uh, de deliver this car model G3 in April this year, and uh, for the red car, it's a uh, SUV uh, from, uh, and uh, we de deliver in large scale in April this year, and uh, next year we will also deliver a new car model. So uh, we are very happy that this year, for about six to seven months, we already we we have sold about fifteen thousand cars and delivered twelve thousand cars. We first uh, sell our cars and then we produce the cars and then we deliver the cars. This means that our customers need to wait longer for our cars. I believe that this uh, business model uh, is very important. It uh, will uh, keep uh, our income Inventory low, uh, so we actually made a lot of efforts to build this business model. But it, this model proves to be working. We've got cash coming in before you actually build and deliver uh, the vehicle I itself. Uh, you, you, so this next model is the P7. Is that correct? And it's a it's a sedan, uh, and the G3 is priced at around what 200 something thousand. Uh, which is about what thirty thousand U.S. dollars around in there. Um, where will the price point be for the P7? For G3, I wish to share with you some uh, interesting uh, figures. So it's around uh, two hundred thousand uh, before government subsidies. And uh, actually, our most uh, uh, of the cars that we sold actually with the best equipment and the facilities uh, installations within the car. So we are happy that we have uh, established ourselves uh, at uh, 200,000 yuan, uh, the middle range. In uh, the, the next uh, uh, auto show in Guangzhou, uh, we, we will have our new car model. So PG, uh, P7 will be more expensive than G3. It will be the third generational uh, car with uh, assistance of autonomous driving. So you can see the our uh, assistant function of uh, driving, uh, the assistant driving, and uh, it will only take uh, four seconds for you to uh, to uh, to start to the full speed. So it will give you a very good driving experience. Thank you. Right now, you uh, you build these under contract. You build them with another uh, manufacturer. But your aspiration is to have your own plant and build them yourself. Uh, yourselves. Uh, what has to happen for you to be able to do that? Thank you. We are working on that actually. Actually, we are a f we have a factory. It is uh, under construction. Now we are working with our partners. 
uh, in Zhengzhou of Central China, the company called Haima, we are working together with them in manufacturing. So I believe that for Chinese companies to go global, I think we should learn from the mobile uh, smartphone industry. If there uh, are OEM uh, manufacturers uh, to do flexible manufacturing for us, that will be very instrumental for the Chinese automobile companies to go global. Of course, there will be some uh, actually many challenges, but uh, so far I'm happy with the progress. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about your vision of what what a car is. Because it's a very uh, difficult thing to go from being uh, uh, in the software business uh, to in being in the hardware business. But as I understand your view, you don't really see yourself as being in the hardware business. You see the car as more like a, a kind of a mobile phone that happens to have wheels. And that just like the mobile phone, the value of the car is the software uh, and the data that can be it can be connected to, and how you can upgrade the quality of that software uh, on a very regular basis, almost like you would, uh, you know, an app. Yeah, actually, we update our car every two months. So, if you are an expert owner. Actually, a few other electric cars can update their system, including driving system and AI every two months. So I believe in the next four to ten years, we will see uh, uh, we will come to see the peak of the uh, for the electric car industry. So in the next four to ten years. Assistant driving will help each and every driver. For assistant uh, driving, uh, I mean that for every 100 hours driving, uh, it will help you in uh, 50 to 90 hours. You can still sit uh, behind the wheels, but the assistant function can help you 50 to 90 percent of the time. So we so. With uh, a mass data of assistant uh, driving, it will bring disruption to the automobile industry. So on many sections uh, of the road, the autonomous driving can replace a human driver in the future. So from the software perspective or from a traditional uh, perspective, uh, cases, suspension system, and uh, many, thing, uh, many things else will be uh, changed. So I think the shape of car will also be uh, changed uh, in the future. So for a uh, startup entrepreneur in the automobile industry, we are very excited because we are going to uh, create a completely new uh, car. For example, the future car will look like an egg. Yeah, futuristic uh, view uh, of of the driving uh, experience, um, and I'm just curious as to how close you think uh, we are in China to that becoming uh, a reality. I mean, um, uh, these this next model that you're you're selling is going to be uh, capable of a certain level of autonomous uh, navigation on the roads, right? Uh, but are the are the systems Necessary for that, far enough advanced that that's going to be a, a seamless, positive experience for drivers. Or, uh, you know, I've spoken to a few people here who were mentioning to me that they've tried it in the United States, and actually, it's still not anywhere close to where it needs to be. That the uh, GPS and the software doesn't work together uh, very smoothly at all. That the cars are too s slow and stopping at, at intersections. They're too cautious in approaching driveways. Uh, that uh, it doesn't feel like a, a, a regular driving experience. Where are we in China? Are we are we close to? Uh, you know, pure autonomous vehicle navigation being a reality? And uh, when you yes, called, uh, 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 there, uh, there are two, uh, two, uh, two uh, categories. One is uh, autonomous assistant uh, driving, 
when it is driverless driving. For the first category, it will take about four to five years. Then the autonomous assistant driving can recognize uh, traffic lights, and uh, they know how you prefer to turn your car, turn right or turn right. I think it will take about four to five years. For the second category, when it will become pilotless or driverless, actually there are a lot of test tests, but. I think that uh, we should work on two things. First, uh, uh, that is uh, that is uh, security. I think it should have uh, absolute or a very high degree of uh, security in order to be run on the road. And uh, now on the t uh, t uh, on the pilot testing, it's about eighty percent uh, secure. That's not enough. And uh, y for further experiments, they need um, m uh, further and mass data. And uh, I think that we need about uh, hundreds of millions of kilometers uh, of data to make uh, to make this kind of machine learning uh, move forward. So we are still in the primary stage of the signal category. Every month. Uh, about 80 percent of uh, uh, parking actually used our autonomous parking function, and uh, for uh, about the autonomous changing of lane well, is about 70 percent every month. So uh, the, actually, they are the first steps in autonomous assistant driving. So we believe that we are making progress every day and very week and every month. So our objective. Yes, kind of uh, quasi autonomous driving or uh, generation 3.5 autonomous driving. So I think that in the years to come, in or one or two years, we can have assistant uh, autonomous assistant driving in most roads in China. But so far, we cannot achieve it. We need to work on. You expect that people will be able to do that with the P7? Is that correct? That's the third generation car for P7. So I hope that when P7 is launched uh, next uh, year, and uh, we can uh, help the driver uh, reach 50 percent of all uh, driving hour, 50 percent. 5G help you to advance uh, capability and autonomous uh, navigation. Uh, 5G uh, technology is very important for autonomous assistant driving and for future complete uh, driverless uh, driving. For example, traffic uh, lights, uh, 5G uh, technology will enable you to plan your routes uh, earlier and also uh, help you uh, to uh, have a human machine interaction. So, uh, this uh, 5G, uh, 5G technology will enable you to have better and smoother interaction, and uh, 5G makes it possible. And uh, maybe and, uh, 5G will also make uh, virtual driving possible, remote uh, virtual driving possible. So uh, I think that uh, 5G will be applied in the automobile industry earlier than many other industries. I um, want to take uh, questions, if there are questions from the audience. Uh, uh, here's one right here. Yeah, if you could stand up and tell us your name. Uh, hi, this is Lydia from Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Uh, I'm going to ask the question in Chinese to you know understand. Hey, 小鹏总，你好，那个 from Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And uh, my question is that you uh, started off business twice, all in the high, all in the tech industry. So, which other technology interests you, or you will you to start another business again uh, with a certain kind of technology? So, I once uh, toyed with the idea uh, about the protection of human brain, freezing uh, of human brain, but it did not work. And. Uh, Another imagination is to establish a city on the water body. So biggest uh, technological advancement is in the energy information exchange, 
even the entities, maybe some others would be engaged in these fronts. Thank you. Interesting. We have a question from the Stock Exchange. Uh, speaking of that, I'd like to ask you just maybe one quick uh, question about, about funding. Uh, there's been debate and rumor and speculation about whether you would seek funding in Hong Kong, in China, go to the United States. Do you want to enlighten us a little bit about your plans there, where you're thinking of listing, and when that might happen? It's indeed a very challenging question for me. We are still doing the reflections, think very hard, be it Hong Kong, be it U.S. I like both of them. Maybe it's too early to tell. Next year, I will be sharing with you this idea. Thank you. I'll have to come back and, uh, and update us uh, at next year's Fortune Global Forum. Please join me in thanking uh, He Xiaopang. Thank you. Thank you.